The tragic buck breaking on the slave plantations. Buck breaking refers to the act of intimate abusing black slaves publicly and in front of other slaves in order to assert dominance, punish them, and ultimately emasculate black men. The term buck breaking comes from black buck, a post-reconstruction era racist term used to refer to black men who were seen as stereotypically violent or unruly. Buck breaking is a form of abuse which became very popular in the Caribbean. It was used by white slave owners as well as merchants. Mainly utilized by slave owners in the Caribbean, the process involved the slave owner forcing the enslaved man to lower his pants and bend over a tree stump to ensure that his buttocks were propped up into the air. The enslaved man would then be flogged severely. This would weaken him so that he would not be able to resist the exploitation that followed. The white slave owner would then proceed to exploit the slave several times. This form of punishment was worsened by the fact that it would be done in full view of all the other enslaved people, including the slave's family and friends. Male slave owners use intimacy assault to dominate, dehumanize, and emasculate male slaves in American antebellum South. The oppression and violence that characterize the institution of chattel slavery are easily accessible, as well as the intimate assault often inflicted on female slaves. Although many slave narratives and journals address female exploitation and other forms of intimate assault, the abuse endured by male slaves has been grossly overlooked. The intention of this video is not to discredit the suffering of female slaves, but the research suggested that the same use of intimacy assault as a form of discipline and control was applied to male slaves. There is a general consensus that only women were subjected to the violently lustful assaults of slave owners. What made butt-breaking distinct from other punishments was that only male slaves were victims. Butt-breaking came to life when African slaves' rebellions had increased. It first started with the stripping of male slaves and having them flogged while other slaves watched. With time, it graduated into stripping and exploit them. This act spared no male, it affected both children and men. At a time, buck-breaking became so successful that it grew into intimate farms, where male African slaves were bred just for the purpose of being exploited by their white masters. Buck-breaking was done to cripple the ego and strength of the male slaves. Most slaves, after being exploited, committed suicide as they could not live with the shame. History archives have it that buck-breaking wasn't only a white master to African male slave thing. Most times, two or more African male slaves were forced to exploit each other. Buck breaking was done to cripple the ego and strength of the male slaves. Most slaves, after being exploited, committed suicide as they could not live with the shame. The buck breaking story wasn't talked about during those days as male slaves felt their ego bruised so they avoided talking about their encounters and experience. Buck breaking is just one of the many ways African slaves were punished and controlled. Buck breaking was also mixed with the breeding farms business white supremacist and slave owners operated. Breeding farms were created to increase the population of black people forcefully. In most cases, black men were forced to sleep with their daughters, wife, mother or sister, and the punishment for refusal was death. Buck breaking, also known as breaking the buck, was a punishment inflicted upon enslaved men in the American South during the 18th and 19th centuries. The term buck referred to an enslaved man who had been deemed resistant or rebellious. To break the buck, Slave masters would use physical and psychological methods to subdue and control the enslaved person. Physical punishment was a common form of buck breaking. Enslaved men would be beaten with whips, paddles, or other instruments, often to the point of severe injury or death. Whipping was particularly prevalent as a form of punishment, with slave masters using the whip to inflict pain and instill fear. In addition to whipping, enslaved men were also subjected to other forms of physical abuse, such as branding, mutilation, Psychological methods were also used to break the buck. Enslaved men were often isolated from others and denied basic necessities, such as food and water, in order to exert control over them. They were also forced to witness the punishment of others as a means of instilling fear and compliance. The intention of buck breaking was to make enslaved men compliant and submissive, to control their behavior and prevent them from resisting or running away. However, the practice was inhumane and dehumanizing, causing great physical and psychological harm to the enslaved men. It also contributed to the perpetuation of the institution of slavery and the oppression of black people in the United States. The use of buck breaking as a measure of discipline among slave masters in the Caribbean increased. The ability to move between plantations allowed white males to exploit intimacy of male slaves. Intimacy farms sprang from the punishment because it was used so frequently.
These farms permitted several slave owners to collectively exploit male slaves as retribution for any alleged infraction. Buck breaking may have been used as a way for same gender slave owners to play out their intimate fantasies on men without drawing attention to their orientation because of its enormous popularity. During this time, same gender relations would have been frowned upon, but strangely, exploit male slaves as a method of punishment was permitted. Male intimacy exploitation is a taboo subject that is rarely talked about. This would account for why buck breaking appears to have been a lost aspect of history that is not discussed or covered in the classroom. Even the most horrific incidents in our past must be remembered and discussed in order to prevent repetition. During the colonial era, slaves were still subjected to the injustices of being deprived of freedom, but slaves were granted more advantages and opportunities for freedom than their future generations would experience in the antebellum era. One such example was Olada Equiano, who purchased his freedom from his master at the age of 22. Although he experienced a milder version of the institution of slavery than Frederick Douglass or Harriet Jacobs, Equiano was not exempt from the damage and violation of slavery. The interesting narrative of the life of Alada Equiano depicts the story a young Equiano being kidnapped in Africa along with his sister. The siblings were eventually separated and Equiano was sent on a slave ship to America. In the winter of 1762, he was befriended by Daniel Queen, a man twice his age. Equiano discloses that on his passage from Africa, Queen messed with me on board this ship and later became very much attached to me. Queen tells Equiano that they never should part. This relationship was clearly unhealthy and based in power. Equiano states that he did not understand the nature of their relationship. Ignoring the fact that Equiano spoke fondly of Queen, the relationship was a violation of Equiano's innocence, considering that Equiano was only 17 at the time this relationship developed. It can be implied that Queen was taking advantage of Equiano's situation since by this time, Equiano had been enslaved for more than half his life and was willing to accept any semblance of kindness from a white person. Along with establishing a strong sense of dominance over slaves, male owners also used immoral assault to dehumanize slaves. In his 1855 narrative, Life and Times of Frederick Douglass, written by himself, Frederick Douglass chronicled his enslavement to Edward Covey from January of 1834 to Christmas of 1835. Douglass's former master, Thomas Auld, sent him to this slave breaker. Douglass's strong sense of self and defiance was a threat to the oppressive and patriarchal system of chattel slavery. Therefore, like a wild young animal, Douglass was to be broken to the yoke of a bitter and lifelong bondage. Within his first month in Covey's possession, Douglass was sent into the woods to collect wood with two oxen. Unexperienced in performing such a task, Douglass damaged the oxen, the wagon, and a gate. Douglass was sent into a secluded part of woods and ordered to strip. Douglas indicated a stern determination to do no such thing. Cubby then rushed upon Douglas with something of the savage fierceness of a wolf, tore off the few and thinly worn clothes Douglas was wearing and flogged him. In the scope of this type of punishment, there was no need to strip the slave of their clothing. This need for seclusion and forced nudity suggested that an omission of the intimate nature of Cubby's tactics have occurred in Douglas's retelling of the events of this flogging. Furthermore, this incident was less than many which came after it. The discipline Douglas received at the hands of Cubby was not abnormal, but the need to be nude and exposed for the punishment implied that some type of intimacy assault occurred in conjunction with beating. Consequentially, Cubby succeeded in dimming Douglas's sense of manhood and humanity.